With game-to-game -game adjustments obviously being prevalent throughout a playoff series, improvisation and execution at the back end of the shot clock, or when action A doesn't go as planned is vital, after today's film room breakdown, stay tuned for Klay Thompson's biggest inspiration for his Game 2 30 piece, which fueled the Warriors special Game 2 masterclass versus the Lakers. Before that, just 12% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. So a lot of what the Warriors got was in transition in this one, but to reference the first point of this video, Moody nearly throws away this bounce pass, DiVincenzo dives on the floor to save it, out muscles AD, then finds Wiggs with a bouncer while still laying down. Wiggs knows exactly where Steph is and spots him with an overhead cross-court bullet. Looney's on the same page, whose slight flare screen makes Dennis veer the slightest bit. Steph's pump fake gets Dennis even more off balance, but even as LeBron gets out for an ideal recovery, the all-time shot-creating sorcery from Chef allows him to lace the nets with two defenders right in his grill. As Draymond noted in his post-game interview, assistant coach Chris DeMarco went over film with him from game one saying he needed to be better defensively. Draymond also said that he needed to be more decisive in that interview, delivering in game two, Green was much more of an intimidating factor on the back side of the Dubs D, and offensively, he was both confidently taking advantage of the open space given to him by LA, and also timing his passes properly. This split action has Curry set a back screen to open up the post entry for Green, who receives the entry from Thompson, patiently waits for Poole to set the flare, and then shovels it to Thompson, who knocks it down. This on-ball from Davis knocks down Poole, but Green switches onto his matchup in Reeves, presses up just enough with the help of a stunt from Thompson to bother the pull-up, but also stays low enough to recover back to the paint where he boxes out Davis. A patented fake handoff is followed by the Lakers giving up the lane for Dre as their game plan says to. Green misses the jump hook, but his initial decisiveness gives him the opportunity to gain his team another possession by knocking it off LeBron. A few minutes later, Dre taps this Wiggins miss away from Davis on the O glass as well, deflecting it to Thompson this time. This innovated high-low baseline out of bounds has Clay play Steph's role as the inbounder and Steph creatively play the role of the five. After it's inbounded to Green, Curry sets the cross screen on Rui, Clay curls around it, gets a handoff from Dre, who gives him a pin down, providing Thompson with more than enough space to take one dribble beyond the arc and knock it down. One of many Kerr adjustments was having Green guard Davis instead of Looney guarding Davis. Here, Green gets right into his body, denying any potential face up, yet has the quickness to burst out of that pressed up stance to deny the baseline drive. This forces a counter from Davis, a spin in the opposite direction, but Green sees it coming and pokes the ball loose right as AD begins that counter. One of four Davis turnovers on the night triggers a fast break, where a play initially called a charge on Wiggins is ultimately reversed, getting the dubs a pair of free throws, so a big swing right there. Back in game one, we saw Curry get harassed and on many instances neutralized playing off the ball, running through flare and cross screens. Kerr made it much less complicated for Curry in Game 2, turning him back into the traditional point guard. The Lakers were eager to set up their half-court defense early on, but weren't as keen on getting back in transition. Curry picked up on this by floating this pass over the top of Braun and Davis to find JMG with pristine accuracy. Continuing the cross-court outlet theme, Curry realizes D'Lo's slow to get back and finds Clay, who roams in for the pull-up J. Back in Game 1, we saw Steph rush up layups and get met by Davis at the rim. Here, he dribbles through the paint in Steve Nash-esque fashion to get around AD, and despite the fact that he misses the layup, I thought that was a better decision from Curry to initially dribble around him. Decent contest by AD to be fair, but Steph makes this 9 times out of 10. Getting accustomed to Vando picking up from 94 feet out, Steph sells line drive attack, and uses a 1998 Jordan push-off in the ref's blind spot, plus a quick twitch stop to get room for the left wing pull-up. More early offense pace pushing makes Schroeder a trail defender, as getting Dennis on his back 
makes Gabriel assume it's about to be a floater. Steph does sell that pretty well with his head square to the bucket, but with Looney rim running, he transitions out of that eye contact directly into a swift bounce pass to Kavon, who finishes past the slow to rotate Gabriel. Darvin Ham's team is again slow to get back right here. Curry springs up for the steal. No one picks up the trailer in Clay, who fills out the lane perfectly, getting to his spot beyond the arc on the left wing. And it's easy money after Steph predictably knows exactly where his fellow Splash Brother is. If you're a Laker, you have to slow down these early offense actions as the Dubs execute another basic screen and roll with on ball Steph and Looney, where Steph sheds AD with, to be fair, two pretty unstoppable consecutive between the legs crossovers, first at the arc and then in the lane, then a third utilization with the rock from Steph, this time a slash to the hoop is enough to draw Davis back to him, and in midair, he finds a streaking loony in the pocket. You would have thought LA would have learned their lesson in the second half to sprint back in transition, but the exact same outlet to Jamichael Green takes place right here. Can you hear Nick from B-Ball Breakdown shaking his head? Nick would be shaking his head again right here, after you guessed it, another easy pickings transition bucket, where this time, Curry easily collapses the defense and spots Jamichael Green, who no one even attempts to close out on. The rare off-ball actions they did run for Curry in this game were quick hitters with not too much relocation. For example, this flare pop with Loon gets him a direct bounce entry from Poole in the low slot. Similar action but on the opposite wing with Wiggins setting the flare, and it's actually a horn set with Looney as Loon ghosts the screen. Schroeder's drawn off of DiVincenzo, who Steph spots with the kickout, becoming one of 12 dimes on the night from Curry when Dante knocks it down. Next, it's a simple V-cut from Steph, where he receives the handoff from Loon, then a couple fakes and jabs, gets Vando jumping, and Steph sweeps through and swoops around Davis on his up and under. This hook strong playset has Steph unpredictably fake the fade cut, and instead of using the Jamaica cross screen, he cuts back door. A perfect bounce entry from Green spots him, and Steph finds the angle and balance to finish it off. Knowing they can take advantage of the Lakers' slow to set up defense in transition, the Dubs run a five out playset they like to call Dre Bust Outs, where Draymond busts out down the court and sends a DHO to a guard on the weak side. With the lane being left open for Green all night, this works to perfection as Chef threads the needle through two defenders to spot him on the roll. As you saw, all those off-ball actions were quick hitters, not too much off-ball screening to get Curry open looks. This play follows the same pattern, with this time a simple cross screen by Moody, leading into a zooms action with Draymond, which gets Steph the catch and shoot from the mid-range. Of course, those playsets and adjustments were paramount, but without the creation from Klay Thompson, the Warriors wouldn't have come close to evening this series. Speaking on the games coming up in his hometown, to cap off this video, here was Thompson on how it's going to be playing playoff games in Los Angeles. I'm gonna, doesn't change much, I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna play hard on both ends, I'm gonna hunt great shots. But just from a life standpoint, it's such an incredible experience to play in front of my friends and family. I mean, I would go to Staples as a high school basketball player with my pops, just dreaming of playing on that floor, playing against the best in the world. Now to be here and be a part of it, I don't lose sight of that perspective of how great this opportunity is. And I'm just excited to do it in a building where all my hoop dreams came about. So uh, I have so much uh, respect for the opportunity ahead for me. And I'm the huge Kobe fan, obviously. He was my biggest inspiration. And uh, I'm just going to play my hardest, you know, just to honestly honor him and, and Gigi. Because uh, without his play and all those years of me viewing his tenacity on the court, I would not be the athlete I am today.